This is Barry Zelma speaking for Zelma's Insurance Fraud Letter of November 1, 2023. This volume 27, issue number 21, is the resource for the insurance claims and insurance fraud professionals who are faced with an attempt at insurance fraud. In this issue, the issue commences with a fictionalized true crime story of insurance fraud called What a Great Country, How Insurance Fraud Can Succeed. It deals with Dr. Wo Ping Chen, who was trained as a physician in Hong Kong until Hong Kong was returned by the United Kingdom to the People's Republic of China. He was the best-known orthopedist in the Crown Colony. Fearing problems with the new government, he emigrated to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, as a citizen of the Commonwealth. He worked as an employee of the National Health Service for a year and then obtained a work visa to the United States and crossed the border into the U.S. only to find he could not work as a physician without a license from a U.S. state and attended a U.S.-based medical school. After one year of medical school, one year of internship in a Seattle hospital, and one year as a resident, Chen was able to restart his life. You can read the full article about how Chen failed fell into a life of crime at the full article, which is available at the link in the blog. Then we move to more McClenny Mosley and Associates issues, this being the 17th installment of the saga of McClenny Mosley and Associates and its problems with the federal courts in the state of Louisiana and what appears to be an effort to profit from what some magistrate and district judges indicate may be criminal conduct to profit from insurance claims relating to hurricane damage to the public of the state of Louisiana. And it starts with a note that Access Restoration Services U.S. Inc. and MMA's scheme alleged in a detailed New Orleans court pleading and more. You can read the full article and the full 20 pages of this issue of Zalma's insurance fraud letter at the link provided in the blog. Then an article about why, after avoiding prison, a fraudster appealed unsuccessfully and a false lightning strike claim resulted in a fraud conviction. Sarah Weisbeck appealed her conviction for insurance fraud, false material information, and identity theft over $1,500 and under $10,000, both Class D felonies. In the state of Iowa versus Sarah Joe Weisbeck, the Court of Appeals on October 11, 2023, considered her pleas for mercy and rejected them. You can read the full article as well as the full 20 pages of this issue at the link provided in the blog. Then we move to our standard health insurance fraud convictions, where we list convictions for health insurance fraud, starting with a Tampa, Florida pain management physician, Edward Lubin, who agreed to pay $1.5 million to settle a False Claims Act liability for receiving bribes and writing unnecessary fentanyl prescriptions. Lubin, a pain management physician, agreed to pay the United States to resolve allegations that he violated the False Claims Act by causing the submission of claims for fentanyl prescriptions that were written in exchange for kickback payments and that were medically unnecessary. 
The agreement resolves the United States claims against Dr. Lubin under the FCA. The claims resolved by the settlement are allegations only, and there has been no admission or determination of liability. You can read this article and dozens of convictions and the full pages of this issue of Zelma's Insurance Fraud Letter in PDF format at the link provided. Then, more fictionalized true stories called the Amoral Public Adjuster, who, although most public adjusters are honorable claims professionals, the fictionalized true story of insurance fraud points out that even the most honorable professions include less than honorable people. Unfortunately, like every profession, some are not honorable, and this story is presented to warn insurers, the public, and professional public adjusters how to recognize the amoral members of the profession and avoid them. Public adjusters, like personal injury lawyers, work on a contingency fee. For a percentage of the recovery, they present claims on behalf of insureds to insurance companies. Like personal injury lawyers, most are honest and some are not. The public adjuster who is the subject of this tale is one of the latter. And you can read the full 20 pages of the issue of Zalma's insurance fraud letter and the full story about the amoral public adjuster. Then we, of course, list other than health insurance fraud convictions where, among others, a claims adjuster will serve prison time for a fraudulent claim scheme. Paul Richard Massey of Shady Spring, West Virginia, a former Allstate claims adjuster, will spend one year and a day in prison, forfeit his beach house and pickup truck to the federal government after pleading guilty to wire fraud and money laundering. Federal prosecutors allege that the 51-year-old Massey issued 68 fraudulent checks from all state accounts, totaling $862,871.29 while he worked as a claims adjuster in 2018 and 2019. Massey had settlement authority for up to $100,000 in his position with Allstate and abused the trust that Allstate put in him. You can read the full article and about many more convictions at this issue of Zalma's insurance fraud letter with the link at the blog. And then there's an article called Crime Does Not Allow an Insurer to Pay, and it is appropriate for withholding coverage for criminal acts because they disincentivize criminal conduct. Safeway Insurance Company sought supervisory writs from the judgment of the lower court, which denied its motion for summary judgment. In Damien Harris v. Safeway, an October 25, 23, a decision of the Court of Appeals of Louisiana. The Court of Appeals resolved an insurance coverage dispute over a criminal acts exclusion in favor of the insurer. You can read this full article and the full 20 pages of this issue of Zalma's insurance fraud letter in the link. You can also subscribe to the newsletter at the link and if you found this newsletter to be of interest or use to you please tell your friends and colleagues so that they can subscribe to the blog to the newsletter 
and to the videos on YouTube and Rumble.com, all of which are free. And if you're interested in further information about insurance fraud, insurance claims, insurance law, please consider for a very small fee subscribing to my Substack publications in my local's community. Thank you for your attention.